Today on Upfront, politics, speech, and money. A key figure in the John Doe probe tells his story. Next, my extended interview with Eric O'Keefe of the Wisconsin Club for Growth. Them, Wisconsin Democrats say elected officials running for national office should reimburse the state for travel and security costs. I'll ask Senator Dave Hansen if the Taxpayer Protection Act stands any chance of passing. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. He's one of the key figures in what's become known as John Doe 2, the secret investigation led by the Milwaukee County District Attorney's Office into alleged illegal campaign coordination among conservative groups in Governor Walker's campaign. The probe has sustained a number of legal setbacks and appears all but dead, but the fallout continues. Eric O'Keefe, the director of the Wisconsin Club for Growth, has been fighting back against what he and his allies have called prosecutorial abuses and a political witch hunt. And Eric O'Keefe joins us now on Up Front. It's good to have you on the program today. Glad to be here, Mike. You don't do a lot of these things. I think this is your first television interview. Why now? Well, we won in the state Supreme Court. That makes it easier to address these things. And uh, um, you have a political audience, and this is a political fight. And uh, you guys invited me, so I'm, I'm happy to be here. Now, now you were one of the, the folks uh, who received a subpoena as part of this investigation. Right. And my understanding is there's a gag order attached to the subpoena. But sometime last year, you decided, I'm going to take the risk, and I'm going to talk about this. Why did you decide to do that? Uh, there were abusive raids on family homes in the dark nearly two years ago. Uh, my colleagues with their children at home and the prosecuting team knew they would be at home. And that, to me, is the most motivating factor. Every day I think of these raids, and I think of the punishment delivered to the children who were traumatized, and we can't undo that. Now, I would rather sit in jail for a year if I could undo the trauma they delivered and take that away. I'd sit in jail for a year. So as far as I was concerned, they delivered a brutal punishment before I even knew they were after me. And, uh, that was a tipping point for you in terms of... As soon as I knew what they had done on these raids in the dark, uh, then I, I knew... Well, actually, I knew I would go public as soon as I read the subpoena because the subpoena, which was a total of seven pages, revealed substantial spying on a private political operation on a whole network of people, some and then people I don't deal with. So it was uh, a really abusive subpoena asking for records back to uh, the spring of 2009 um, so I knew then that I would have to air this and that I wouldn't be able to uh, keep with the uh, secrecy order. And by the way, you're, you're right, I was subpoenaed, not, uh, did not have my home raided. Mm -hmm. I was a target, one of the targets, and there was a last-minute decision uh, based on uh, them not thinking the sheriff of Iowa County would cooperate. Uh, th that they didn't raid my house, but they had intended to. I, I want to have you respond to something that, that you know uh, has been in the news in the last few weeks, and that is uh, we read the accounts of the raids in, in publications like the National Review, uh, terrifying stories told by individuals like Cindy Archer, um, and, and yet a tape, an audio tape is released of that uh, raid on Cindy Archer's home in Madison, and it has, a, I would argue, a different tone to it. It sounds more matter-of-fact. It sounds a little different than what she described. How do you explain that? What, what do we not know about that? Well, the most important thing is that the recording doesn't include the opening minutes. The arrival of the officers. Of the raid, right. So the attorney who works for John Chisholm waited until things had calmed down, until the dogs were out, and the shouting was over, and, and uh, then came in. So they skipped the most dramatic components. I don't know whether they cut anything else out, but just skipping the first minutes. And then I would also ask people, is there, is there a kind of a raid on a family home of a peaceful person that isn't abusive? No matter how, I mean, how polite is it when they have flak vests on, guns, police cars out in front of your home? They're, they can act as nice as they want to inside, but it is an abusive raid. You feel uh, that this is a political witch hunt, there's nothing else to it, that this was an attempt to intimidate conservative voices in a, in a re-election campaign. Right. This was political from inception, and I'm going back to May 5, 2010. This is one continuous Doe that they've called Doe 1 and Doe 2. I've been working on it now for almost 23 months, and I have yet to find any of what I would call legitimate investigatory activity. It was politically motivated from the inception, and the entire thing has been an abusive 
prosecution or investigation for political purposes. Let, let me have you address what's really at the heart of the, the second part of the Doe investigation, and that is whether or not there was illegal campaign coordination between groups like yours and Governor Walker's campaign. And if you look at some of the emails that have been released so far in, in this investigation, uh, they indicate there were correspondences between people on the governor's staff, uh, people who were raising money for the governor, and sent to people with the Wisconsin Club for Growth. Uh, there are suggestions about how to raise money, where the money might go. Um, to an average person, that might look like coordination between a campaign and an independent group. Why was that not a violation of the state statute? Or did you simply believe the statute was no longer valid, given other court rulings? Well, we complied with Wisconsin's unconstitutional law. And uh, court, one of the unfortunate things about campaign finance law is terms that have two meanings. Coordination sounds like, well, I talked to you. Are, are we, we're coordinating on a television show right now. Um, it's not illegal to talk to political allies, even in Wisconsin. And uh, Kevin Kennedy might not like it, but it's not illegal. Um, the coordination that in some states is illegal would involve a group basically saying, hey, instead of your campaign doing that ad for you, I'll do an anti-tax ad, let's say. I'll do an anti-tax ad in Green Bay. That what, what hasn't come through in the mainstream media, I'm glad to get a chance to do it, is the Wisconsin Club for Growth didn't even advertise in the gubernatorial elections. We didn't advertise for Walker or against Barrett in 2010, 2012, or 2014. There is no state that has outlawed a candidate working with an independent group that's running issue ads that don't have anything to do with that candidate's campaign. And that's what the club did. And by the way, I'll also say that I, I don't, you can't accept as fact anything the prosecution has filed in this. The fundraising operation of the Wisconsin Club for Growth was ours, mine. I brought a fundraising team in. We asked the governor to help raise money. He helped raise money for the Wisconsin Club for Growth. We raised it. We followed up. We decided how to spend it. And we spent it on issue ads related to the conflicts in Wisconsin. But you're saying some of the emails, we can't believe some of the emails that have been released as part of this uh, investigation? No, the context in which they're selectively put is misleading. So they, they have said in their filings that Walker had his fundraisers raise money for the Wisconsin Club for Growth. That never happened. Let me uh, uh, pause right now because it's a good point for a, a break in the conversation. When we come back, I, I want to talk to you about what you think the legacy uh, of the John Doe is in the state of Wisconsin. We'll continue our conversation with Eric O'Keefe from the Wisconsin Club for Growth in just a moment. Up Front with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.